Hi there, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop. This is the fourth video in my Gorgon transport series. In this video, I'll carry on from the last video and finish off the driver cab. With the driver complete, it's now ready to add the driver to the cab itself. Uh, just looking at the instructions, the next step after that is to assemble the cab and then to add on both the right gun position and the rear door, followed by the left gun position. Now, the reason why I mentioned that is because I wanted to see if there was a way I could possibly magnetize this top section or maybe not magnetize it at all and just have it loose so this could pop off and the driver would be visible and you could see all the interior cab detail. Unfortunately, I don't think it's at all possible based on the way I've built it and it would basically involve having to cut up part of the top cabin to make it work. So once this cab was painted, I'd added on this side. I've since green stuffed this and just smoothed it down to give it a nice uh, smooth join between the two sections. I also had to heat this roof up slightly so I could bend it into shape so it would fit flush with this back section and along with filing this section and this section down just to smooth those two bits together. And it would also mean, in theory, it doesn't need to be magnetised or even glued in place, and it would still look pretty good. There's a bit of gapping here, which I could potentially get away with green stuffing while still keeping these two parts separate. So the whole idea is that this could pop off with no magnets in place, and I could show the cab detail. So the reason why this cab can't come off is due to these gun positions here. So once these are in place, you can see just in there, there's a little electrical box attached to the side. And then there's also this lip here. So for this cab top to come off, it needs to come off in this direction, which it can't actually do as it's being held in place by that electrical box. If you really did want this to come off, you have potentially two options. One of which is to cut this lip here and maybe attach the lip to the main floor instead and that way the box should be able to lift upwards instead of forwards. You still might have some issues though because you've got to try and take it off in this direction due to that electrical box uh, to stop it from catching on the top here. Now another option might have been to take the two side walls here and here and not glue them to the cab top. Potentially you could glue them to the cab bottom and then you might be able to get away with this cab piece here coming off quite easily. The downside of that is you will potentially have a sort of seam line that will be a bit more visible. Now I'm not too sure how easy that would work, partly because there's a lot of detail on this wall section that slots into quite carefully at the top and the front of the cab and I think that would actually make taking this piece on and off quite difficult. It's less of an issue on this side, it's pretty much a straight wall all the way around. One additional reason why it might be tricky to magnetise and remove this top cab section is because there's also these rails which go on the top and that is replicated on the other side. You would either have to magnetise this in addition or you would have to glue it at this contact point here. Uh, so they would lift up together. So again, another reason why I don't think it's best to try and make this a removable piece and just glue it all in together. Those might be the two best methods to go about joining the cab together. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to glue mine in place. I do genuinely believe you can see a lot of the detail through the door. You can't hear at the moment due to the lighting. If I adjust it uh, to be slightly better, you can actually see quite far into the cab. So it's not like all my efforts will be in vain. I'm going to have to stick to my original plan and just glue these parts all in place. So here is the cab driver complete and fully assembled. So to assemble the driver to the cab, firstly you had to remove the brass rod that was attached to the seat, just in that kind of cylinder section just there. That was what was holding the piece to the cork. So I took that out and filled it in with green stuff. That was just to ensure there was a decent amount of contact points for when this bit here joins the floor. So I super glued him in first on his own. Um, I had then test fitted both of the arms to make sure that the body was in about the right position. So with the bottom of the seat as my main contact point for the glue, I didn't really want to add any to the feet uh, just in case they didn't actually connect. As you can see here on the bottom, there's no contact point there because it looks like his foot is just off of the brake uh, where it's down on the pedal. 
so I carefully added some extra glue just at that point there because the driver was a little bit wobbly when he was just glued in at the seat. With the body secured in I then added in this arm I let that dry and then I added in this arm. Before I glued in the arms I made sure I did a dry fit just to test it out and made sure they fitted okay. The fit of the arms is actually really good and there's very little seam line between them and when I was gluing the arms together I got a tiny bit of glue just on the coat so I just touched that up with a bit of paint to hide the glue mark. And that's it, he's complete and this is the last time we see him before he is sealed in forever into the cab. So the next step is to add the cab on and with him in the cab you can just see through the door how much he'll be actually visible in the finished Gorgon. So I think it was definitely worth painting him up. Even So the next step is to glue the cab in. I will then green stuff this gap here because it's quite large and along the bottom and the other side and this floor here. I will then green stuff up the joint at the top uh, here and here and then I'll probably just tidy up this uh, section down here as well. I've gone away and I've smoothed down all those areas that I was just talking about so around here in the bottom and again on this side it's now really super smooth so I think that will look really good once it's painted and again I've touched up these areas here as well and I've just straightened out these two sections so they should now clip on to the sides much easier if I just attach these two in so that is now rigid uh, there was a bend just here so that's now secure and in place I'd also notice that this section here was bent a lot more backwards so you could see the seam line and I'd actually worked out by looking at the one on the other side that this is actually meant to line up with the seam line um, of this just here. So that gives you a good uh, guide for where these pieces need to be if they're slightly misshapen. Uh, so I just heated that up with my air gun and bent it into position. I'd also noticed that just here this was leaning outwards slightly and that just needed bending in place. Now a good way to make sure that this area here is all lined up correctly, you just need to take the inner hole, which I'll be adding to it later, and just do a test fit now. If there's any gaps, which is what I had, all you need to do is heat it up. And in fact, what you can do is heat up this whole section and then press it firmly up against here, and then that will conform it to the right shape that it needs to be. And then just let it cool, and then you'll have your piece correctly shaped. So I just needed to do that on uh, both halves, and I just tidied up and smoothed all these angles. I'd also cut out this notch that was missing so these pieces can now fit on like so. So this should be the stage where you can start gluing all these pieces together. Now let's just do a dry fit first. So if I add in the left hand side, add in the ramp and then add in the right hand side and you can see this now aligning up here because I had to bend that in place. So there we go, these pieces are all now pretty solidly locked in place. That ramp can still pop down. What I did is I just slightly filed down both sides of the ramp and the inner doors, just so there be a slight gap, which will aid in that door coming down once there's paint on those two surfaces. So my next suggestion is only to actually glue one of these sections together. I think most likely this one because you'll be able to do all of this gluing here and green stuffing of that join. And the detail here is quite minimal, uh, whereas the detail on this one is a bit more blocky. So I think actually painting this piece on its own and these two bits separately will be the way forwards. I'll save assembling and painting these parts for the next video. Feel free to drop me a comment below and if you want to stay notified about the next video make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon. Until the next time, take care.